2 Corinthians chapter 13. I will begin reading with verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning with verse 5. Examine yourselves, seeing whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear, appear approved, but that you should do that which is honorable, whether or not we may seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. We wish even your perfection. Therefore I write these things, being absent, Least being present, I should be sharp, according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Finally, brothers, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of joy and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let me speak to you just a moment this morning. The communion of the Holy Spirit. Communion of the Holy Spirit. Father, again, we just thank you for the reading of your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for that that we have felt already in this place. I believe that burdens have been lifted this morning. And I believe miracles are on the way. I believe the miraculous has been set loose. And I believe, Lord God, that you will be the author of all these things. And again, I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. There are times when God will speak very directly to individuals and to churches. That if they will be open and sensitive to the leading and the guiding and the direction of the Holy Spirit, then He will lead them in ways that will amaze and awe them. He will open up doors that seem to be closed, and He will show visions and give dreams that will not only change our lives, but will change the lives of dozens of people that we know and love, and even those that we do not know. True intimacy with the Holy Spirit is priceless. Can I say that again? True intimacy with the Holy Spirit is priceless. His presence and power provide everlasting satisfaction that is unsurpassed. The Holy Spirit will provide manna from heaven for a hungry person and water to quench a thirsty soul. I am still amazed that there seems to be those in, church, in the church world that believe that they can get by without an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. A.W. Tozer once said, I remind you that there are churches so completely out of the hands of God that if the Holy Spirit withdrew from them, they wouldn't find out for many months. God forbid that any church would be so void of the Holy Spirit that they would not know. How many of you are thankful that we still believe that God the Holy Spirit operates in this church here? A.W. Tozer also said these words, to capture these words, God has said eternity in our hearts, and we have chosen time instead. He is trying to interest us in a glorious tomorrow. And we are settling for an inglorious today. We are bogged down in local interest and have lost sight of eternal purposes. We improvise and muddle along, hoping for heaven at last, but showing no eagerness to go there. Correct doctrine, but weary of prayer, 
and board with God. Father, I pray that Angling Neverhood Church would never be this kind of church. But that, Father, you would help us and encourage us. Keep us focused on the power of the Holy Spirit. And we give you thanks in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. If you're taking notes this morning, and I noticed last week that there were several taking notes. My first point this morning in having communion with the Holy Spirit starts with amazing grace. Somebody say amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appeared the hour I first believed. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days. Give him praise to sing in God's praise than when we first begun. If you're thankful for grace, give the Lord a clap off and a praise. <laughs> Listen to me carefully this morning, Angel Lake Deborah Church, the grace of Jesus is what sustains us. It gives us purpose and allows us to be transformed and changed. Because of the sacrifice of Calvary's cross, we have grace that is only given by God. The grace of Jesus is unmerited favor and mercy. Oh, my friends. Oh, my friends. Because Jesus took my place on the cross and took away my sins and clothed me in righteousness, I've been given amazing grace. If I'm going to experience communion with the Holy Ghost like I know I must, then I must first know about the grace of Jesus. I am thankful this morning for the cross, and I am thankful for the grace of Jesus Christ. The second point I have for us today, if we're going to experience communion with the Holy Spirit, is that we, must, that, that we will need to know about God's extravagant love as we walk through this life and experience all it has for us both good and bad anybody experience good and bad of life as we walk through this life and experience all it has for us both good and bad let our focus always be on how much God loves us how many times how many times has God spoken to this assembly through the tongues and interpretation Declaring God's love for us. How many times? How many times? My friends, you can't count the times. In the 12 years that I've been here, you cannot count the times that God has expressed His love for you. He loves you. He loves you with everything that He has. And He wants you to be the people that He's called you to be. How many times have we experienced a spiritual song where again, God declared his love for us. Listen to what scripture tells us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Man, that excites me. That excites me. 
God's love for us is so great that there is nothing that keeps him from loving us. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should what? And what? But have eternal life. I am thankful for the blood of Jesus. I am thankful that I can have communion with the Holy Ghost. And it starts with the amazing grace of Jesus demonstrated by God's extravagant love. My third point this morning, you're saying, Pastor, you're moving through this pretty quickly. Well, it's because God's got something to say. My third point this morning is this. Intimate fellowship. Intimate fellowship. Simply speaking, communion means fellowship, companionship, sharing together. When we are intimate with someone, there is fellowship. Listen, when, you're, when you have an intimate relationship with someone, you share, you talk, you stay aware of what's going on in the lives of those people. And that's the kind of relationship that God wants to have with us, each and every one of us, through His Holy Spirit. If you've ever read through the book of Acts, and if you haven't read through it, let me encourage you to do so. In fact, let me encourage you to slow down and read it word for word. You will find a group of people that were so dependent on the Holy Spirit, it is utterly amazing how they listened to God the Holy Spirit followed his every command, and it was just amazing to watch how they operated. The leaders of the early church had fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Acts 20, 22. Now compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what shall befall me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions Await me. Compelled by the Holy Spirit. We need to start being able to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to many of us. The problem is, is that He tells us things that we don't necessarily want to hear. He'll tell us something and we go, Oh, that must have been the pizza I had last night. That must be somebody else's voice in my ear. My friends, let us listen to God, the Holy Spirit, and not... Reject him when he speaks into our hearts. Because we are told that we will have many times affliction that awaits us as we are obedient to the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul relied on his relationship with the Holy Spirit to direct his path. Paul was completely dependent on his relationship with the Holy Spirit. I think that if we're not careful. Listen, I think if we're not careful. The directives of the Holy Spirit can get lost in the noise of our lives. Let us be careful that we don't fill our lives up with noise when we should be listening to God, the Holy Spirit speaking. You say, Pastor, I don't have time. You need to cut something out of your life. If you don't have time to listen to God, the Holy Spirit, you need to cut something out and get rid of it. Because if it's keeping you from hearing the voice of God, I suggest to you that you get near Jesus and start listening to him and stop listening to the things of the world. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. Man, if you're angry about a lot of the things that are going on in the world, I suggest to you slow down and start listening to God. God may have in us a righteous anger about things, but my friends, more than anything else, we need to be a people that will lift up the name of Jesus and watch the miraculous happen. And see, God's hand come and perform the miracles that he desires to, mir- to, to do. If we get stuck or we get caught up in the things that I'm thinking, the things that I'm thinking should happen, then I'm in trouble. Let us get rid of the noise of the world and listen to the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 19. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Three men are looking for you, so rise and go down and go with them Doubting nothing. Someone say doubting nothing. For I have sent them. We see here Peter being given very specific directions from the Holy Spirit. Now listen. I think in my mind, I am sure that he was not happy with that directive. But he what? 
He went anyway. Somebody shout obedience. If we're going to be the people that God desires for us to be, we must be prepared to follow through with the Holy Spirit's direction, even if we disagree with it or it does not match our agenda. Acts 8, 29, the Spirit said to Philip, go to the chariot and stay with it. Philip was so familiar with the Holy Spirit, he knew the Holy Spirit's voice. If we are not in tune or in communion with the Holy Spirit, my friends, we risk, we run the risk of missing great opportunities to see the supernatural. Communion with the Holy Spirit also means partnership. Good partnership requires both communication and action. Listen to 1 Corinthians 3, 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's vineyard. You are God's building. God, through the Holy Spirit, invites us to be laborers together with Him, to partner with the Creator of heaven and earth, to see His glory fill the earth. Listen to me, my friends, this morning. We must understand that God can do anything with nothing. Can somebody shout amen? amen. God can do anything with nothing. Somebody shout amen. amen. And He chooses to use us in the process. We are His hands and feet in this world. And where faith is great, the mightier God moves upon a work and a people. Listen, I am the world's worst of crying about what we're going through right this very moment with all the things that we see going on around us. And there's a lot of things to cry about. But it is time that we dry up the tears and start proclaiming victory in the name of Jesus and start walking forward in what he desires for us to walk forward in. Can somebody shout amen? amen. I, I don't know about anybody else that's here, but I feel God stirring in my spirit that today is today that we can see his power poured out in such a way that the lost will be saved, that the sick will be healed, that those that are possessed will be delivered and captives will be set free. I'm believing today that these things will happen, not because I'm anything, but because he is everything. Yes. We are his hands and feet. Philippians 4.13. Let's say this together. Let's all read this together if we got it up on the screen. That's pretty small, but maybe you can read it. Let's say it together. I can do all things. Let's start over. Let's start over. Say it with me. I can do all things because of Christ who strengthens me. Who believes that? Be careful. Be careful. Who believes that? Let's say it again. I can do all things because of Christ who strengthens me. Now, this doesn't mean that we are equal with God or we are, that we are God's ourselves. We must still have a holy reverence for God. But he has chosen to allow us to be part of his plan and designed to see his glory fill the earth. What a privilege and what a responsibility. Let me say that again. What a privilege. And what a responsibility that he has given us through this choice. God, the Holy Spirit, lets us be a partner with him. In order to understand this communion and partnership with the Holy Spirit, we need to understand his wonderful presence. How precious has his presence been here this morning? How precious? Who has felt his power and his glory in this house this morning? Who has felt his desire to move into every heart and touch every life? Yes. Oh, Father, Lord God, we your people love you. And just We want to rest in your glory and in your presence. And we just thank you right this very moment for speaking to us individually and collectively in such a way that we'll know that you love us and care for us. And that you have given us very specific instruction. We, your people, give you praise. My hope and prayer, every time I stand before you, I don't stand before you thinking that I am something. I stand before you because God has called me to stand and to declare his glory and his presence. And it is my hope that you see and understand and know how precious you are to God 
and how much he desires to use each and every one of us through a wonderful communion of the Holy Spirit to see his glory fill the earth. I want to see his glory fill the earth. I want to see his glory fill the earth. I want to see his presence so heavy that we will know and understand that we have communed with him today. This is why it's so important to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. My friends, we must make time every day to be in his presence, to experience his divine hand upon our lives. Now, I'm not, I'm not fussing, but as your pastor, I want to encourage you. Are you praying daily? Are you reading your word daily? Are you in communion with the Holy Spirit daily? Are you setting aside time just to praise and worship him? Are you spending time with him, telling him all that's going on in your life and listening for him to speak into you what he has for you? Are you in communion with the Holy Spirit this morning? With his wonderful presence? My friends, we must make time. We must make time. We must make time. And we must experience his divine hand. Communion also means intimacy with the Holy Spirit. James 4 or 5 says, Do you think the scripture says in vain, He yearns jealously for the Spirit that lives in us. I, I don't know how to express it in a way to make every person understand it. But God, the Holy Spirit, is jealous. Jealous to have relationship, divine relationship, intimate relationship with every believer of Jesus Christ to such a degree that when he speaks, you will know his voice. When he cries out to you, you will understand the directives that he's given to you. When you go to the place you know you shouldn't, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and encourage you. He's jealous for you. He longs for your time and attention. Do we understand that nothing is hidden from him? His knowledge, his wisdom and understanding are limitless he longs, I tell you this morning, he longs to reveal himself to every person that is here. If we think that we can draw close to Jesus outside of an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, we are simply kidding ourselves. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. Just as when Jesus came, he revealed the Father. The Holy Spirit loves to glorify Jesus. If you desire to know more about Jesus, then my friends, you need to know more about the Holy Spirit. So the question might be asked, Pastor, how do we draw close to the person of the Holy Spirit? Simply, my friends, you have to get to know him. How do I get to know him? You have to spend time with him. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not force himself on you. If you start drawing closer to the Holy Spirit by inviting him into your life, when you but if you pursue your own agenda and you don't yield to him, you quench the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. If you want to have personal, intimate fellowship, communion with the Holy Spirit, Draw near to him. But if you start to walk in your own agenda, in your own power, in your own thought, with your own ideals, then you will quench the Holy Spirit that is in you. I'm, I'm glad that we sang the song this morning about the fire of the Holy Spirit. Anybody here believe we need a fire? Who believes we need a fire to sweep across this land? A Holy Ghost fire. How many of you believe that we need people on the sidelines fanning it too? Fanning it and hoping that it will blow and it will go and that it will move into the hearts and lives of people. I need the fire of the Holy Spirit. I need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Anybody else with me? I want to fan the flames of the Spirit in my life. I don't want to quench Him. I want to grow close to Him. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Let me ask you a question. Are you yielding yourself completely to the will of of the Holy Spirit. Let me ask that question again. In fact, let me ask it while every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I'm not closing necessarily, but I want to ask this in a serious way. 
Are you yielding yourselves completely to the will of the Holy Spirit? Father, I pray for every person in this house this morning. Father, I pray that we will be a people that will be completely yielded to the power of the Holy Spirit. That we will have an intimate fellowship, an intimate relationship, an intimate communion with the Holy Spirit. And I give you thanks in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen and amen. My friends, let me just help you this morning. When you start to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, He will begin to show you the areas in your life that need changing and encouraging. I believe that someone here has already begun to feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. To say that there are certain things that you do, certain things that are going on in your life, that God has spoken to you very clearly. You don't need those in your life. Spend more time with God than with those things. Will you read the Word of God? Who here will make a commitment today to read the Word of God? Who here will make a commitment to read more of the Word of God? Say, Pastor, we don't, none of us read it enough. Can I just make that statement? Not one person here reads the Word of God enough, including me. We all need to read it more. Somebody shout amen. amen. Need to read it more and see how it applies to our life. This is where my spiritual food comes from. You will start to grow in the fruit of the Holy Spirit as you become more like Jesus. As we draw closer to the Holy Spirit, we will begin to understand that God desires that we go into the world and make disciples. The emphasis is on make. What God has provided for us to accomplish in this goal is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The closer we draw to the Holy Spirit, the more of Him we will desire it is here that the Holy Spirit will pour Himself out upon you. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will begin to pray and praise God in a heavenly language. And you will develop this prayer language that is just between you and God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will keep you and draw you even closer to God. Listen. There will be something different in you when the Holy Spirit has an intimate place in relationship to you. I, I can remember many times, I, I have this vision in my mind when we were stationed at Fort Hood, Texas, and I was in a, in a motor pool there, and I was a senior NCO, had a lot of responsibility, had a lot of power, had a lot of people that answered to me. And I can remember very clearly that I would have a group of soldiers around. We'd be on a break. We would never do it. I would never do this while we were working. Somebody shout amen. amen. But when we were on a break, lunchtime, I would always talk to them about my relationship with Jesus. And I remember one day I was talking to a group of fellows, and another guy walked in and caught the conversation about halfway. And when I finished, he said, where are you pastoring at? And I told him, I said, I'm not pastoring at the moment. I'm just a Joe. I'm just a soldier who loves Jesus very much. And I want the world to know how much he's done for me. Because the Holy Spirit has transformed and changed my life. Let us be that kind of people. You've heard the story of my friend. That was in the same unit that I had the first sergeant that called me Jesus. That same unit. That's the same unit where me and another E7 would stand out in front of the motor pool. And one day I would lead him to Jesus. The next day he'd lead me to Jesus. And we said it out loud for everyone to hear. Because we wanted the word of God to do what? Go forth and penetrate the hearts of the people that were there. You say, Pastor, how are you able to do that? Only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because in my human fle flesh, I wouldn't even say anything. Because what? People might talk bad about me. But I want you to know right now that when you're working with the Holy Spirit, you're listening to what God is telling you, He will give you the courage to stand up and boldly proclaim that Jesus is real. Who believes that today? Who believes that today? I, I have this feeling. Worship team, if you'd like to come back. I have this feeling this morning that God wants to do something very special. So I would like for every person here, if you desire to have more communion with the Holy Spirit, 
Would you stand to your feet? I want more communion with the Holy Spirit. I've always loved this little chorus. Frank, were you guys going to play this? Or am I doing it a cappella? I'll do it a cappella. Here we go. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Come as a rest to the weary. Come as a balm to the sore. Come, Lord, as strength to my weakness. Fill me with joy evermore. Sing it out. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Now listen to this verse. Listen, you can sing it too. Come like a spring in the desert. Yes, Lord. Come to the withered of soul. Lord, let your healing and power touch me and make me whole. One more time. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Friends, whether you realize it or not, God is speaking to this body. It is his desire that we have communion with the Holy Spirit in such a way that we will grow and mature and come to an understanding of his glory and his power and his presence. And all the things of the world will grow dim. And all the things that we have focus on will just fall away. And all the noise of the world will disappear when we get into the presence of God the Holy Spirit. If you believe that and you want more of God the Holy Spirit, would you raise a hand towards the sky and say, Lord, come. Lord, come right now. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Pour out your presence upon my life. Find all those things that keep me from your presence. Search me, O Lord. Search me, O God. See if there be any wicked way in me. Help me to understand and know if there are those things that are keeping me from your presence, your glory, your power. I confess and repent and lay down my sinfulness as I desire more of you. And Lord, if I have more of me than more of you, then help me to die, oh God, and let you rise up inside of me and give me that that I need to walk in your very power and your glory and your presence. Come, Lord, right now. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Show me, give me direction. Help me to be obedient to your word. Help me to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Show me the way.